like when you when you decided to make this film what did you see in amar singh chamkila see i've been coming to punjab to shoot different films um and then while in the journey you know hanging out with the locals i realized that you know there are a lot of people that work on the set but when they go home they go listening to some chamkila named guy some guy called chamkila they were always listening to his songs for their deep satisfaction or happiness um and these are the um remixes etc and um, so i became intrigued by this mm. thing. and uh, gradually on my subsequent trips i was told about him there is this uh, also we, we had this production uh, uh, head called rajesh sharma my friend he was he is from uh, himachal but he said that chamkila also had a very interesting life right so all of these things were going on and he i uh, and often times people used to say randomly in punjab also that you know that was the real guy you should make the film on him he is truly representative of music in punjab and all of that and he's grassroots is the real deal so to speak so mm-hmm. that's how i came came around to get no no yeah but but much of uh, what we know about him is already in public domain you know there's sure. a lot that is in public domain so how is your film going to be different uh, how are you going how what kind of chamkila are we going to see so i think uh, and, um, this is the first time i'm making a um, biopic so to speak so right hmm. and i've never made it so i won't claim to know how to make them um but i guess i relied on first hand research a lot especially for somebody like chamkila where not much literature or not much li- credible literature exists it is mostly through people's narratives uh that i have constructed my knowledge base for chamkila uh some facts uh, are scientifically proven so it's fine but otherwise i have i have met uh, many people uh, that were involved that were a part of his life mm-hmm. um and uh, the key figures i'd like to name some mm-hmm. uh, um charanjit ahuja who was his uh, recording engineer and also music director because he used to make the music pieces for all his recordings he was a very important source for me um then um there is a guy called kikkar dalewal who was some some like somewhat his manager uh, and also shagird then swaran singh sibya uh, who passed away unfortunately uh while we were filming actually rich information i got from him also then um tikki kesar singh tikki very very important figure in the life of chamkila very important figure and him i met and met several times all these people then chinda mm-hmm. mr chinda who passed away again recently unfortunately mm-hmm. and and um, so all these people were involved in his life many many others um, also his uh, wife his first wife gurmail kaur uh, then of course his son uh, and daughter and family various people who have also seen chamkila's live performances various people that were involved in uh, the marketplace who was selling um, you know records and cds so that kind of so meeting all of these people gave me a kind of an insight into chamkila but what, what, what is what is the biggest challenge as you're saying this is your first biopic uh, what what is the biggest challenge of bringing a real person to life as opposed to a fictional character of course you brought a musician's life you know uh, for us in rockstar it's not the same thing mm-hmm. it's because here you've got to stick to the facts and sometimes it seems on the surface that carrying on the fact into a story ha- can have its inconveniences mm-hmm. you know 
the convenience of just writing a fictional scene which will have the correct uh, balance of emotion and passion or what have you mm-hmm. is in your hand but when you are making a biopic you will have to rely upon the facts not only the facts but to be pure to this process even those things that you have no source of knowing mm. you will have to be very truthful and think that if before this you know for instance there suppose there is a scene in the in the bedroom of chamkila and amarjot where they are alone now what they spoke inside mm. there that they are not there to tell me right i will have to approximate but i have to rather be a detective than a writer first mm-hmm. or a psychologist than a writer and think about if he if they came into the room thinking like this which i know because mm-hmm. someone has told me and if they went out of the room thinking like that then what might have happened in the room you know with that you construct but, and, uh, but and that also brings me to i mean of course the way he died there is a conspiracy theory to it you know some people think of it as a you know there is a caste angle there is professional rivalry and then of course there is a terror angle so yeah. I mean, like there you have to play the detective have you how have you handled that <laughs> no there what i have done is firstly let me say that hmm. parsing chamkila is not a uh, an investigative piece at all okay the film doesn't claim to either tell or even know Hmm. who the real killers of chamkila were or who the conspirators behind those killers were it is common knowledge that a, a gang of people hmm. uh, arrived on the scene and killed him before a certain akhada which happened on the 8th of march in mehsampur in 1988 that people know um they did not know religious organization no organization had claimed his killing um which is also represented beyond this we don't go mm-hmm. so it's not an investigative piece i'm more concerned about the life of an artist the mm-hmm. life of a popular person in a punjab which was burning during the 1980s uh, i uh, but do then uh, uh, is it an anatomy of fame in a way uh yeah it is the anatomy of fame because fame can be a uh, um, double edged sword uh, while it can um, raise you to a pedestal it can also crucify you and i that is something that we get to see in chamkila the film so i mean uh, criticism and fame are i mean the flip sides of the you know coin right absolutely and, uh, and uh, have you faced it too uh, or or not well to some extent you do uh, you know uh, and it is not something that you can explain to anybody because it seems like mm-hmm. uh, like a uh, you know you're blowing your own trumpet or something it seems like you're throwing a tantrum mm-hmm. but i think people that have the privilege of being popular or famous also endure certain special uh, occupational hazards mm-hmm. but and how do you come to terms with it then well you i think uh, like in my case it happened slowly and uh, so gradually i also learned to be more patient with it and be very thankful uh, about the fact that for instance people feel nice some people feel nice uh, meeting and clicking pictures etc <laughs> okay and uh, you are mostly known for you know sufi idea of romance sufi idea of music and here is a singer who is also known for you know uh, his vulgar songs so to say right. uh, yeah. so how do you reconcile with that dichotomy or how do you come around that there is a larger question here uh, which i think i think about sometimes who decides what is right or wrong who decides what is suitable for the society and for people to hear or see what is the anatomy of censorship who can judge that i should sh- sh- throw the first cast the first st- 
stone as jesus said mm-hmm. uh i feel that time and again we are uh, we come to a situation where something is extremely popular but also heavily criticized mm-hmm. and uh, a lot of people consume a lot of content but they don't admit that they do you know right. and chamkila was a case in point of that that became a very interesting thing you know sufism also says that beyond right doings and wrong doings there is a field i'll meet you there it is not up to us to judge either what an artist does or what the consumer likes we have to accept those things you can have an opinion that i don't want to listen to this song because i feel it is vulgar mm-hmm. but then you have to also think that for th- for hundreds of years your grandmothers have been singing much worse mm. and much more uh, vulgar songs in your own culture so sometimes one has to take out the uh, you know the glasses of traditional society norms and view humanity um with a bit more leniency uh there there is a folklore expert who says that you know folk music or popular music mm. uh, as opposed to you know other art forms is not not really pure art do you agree with that i don't And think the art it caters to the market to some extent i think art always caters to a market and uh, i don't think any artist uh, like very few artists in the world have not wanted their art to be seen or by the world or appreciated by the world definitely um, songs have to be popular because they and this is like songs need to be popular because people enjoy them you know and songs are uh, they don't cost anything for a consumer to enjoy some people who have money for no other form of entertainment can at least listen to a song and sing it for their own entertainment and this is what has been happening in the smallest and the poorest sections of punjab and everywhere in the world honestly so if it is if it tends to be towards a popular uh, uh, like uh, version of people's interests then it also actually um, you know uh, um has the like it that's what makes it the widest and the most appreciated you know songs have uh, bigger legs than any other art form more than movies more than painting more than books um you know, anyone can enjoy a song so i think therefore music stars or singers have always been more popular than any other uh people or any other artists in punjab when you when you making a film on a on a popular you know singer uh, mm. whose songs are chart busters as it is uh, ah. how do you how do you strike a balance between the old and the new uh, what to retain of his old songs and of course you have uh, ar rahman on board for other songs and music right so yes we i we had i had decided that chamkila in the film will never sing anything except for his original songs which were all in punjabi mm-hmm. i was making a hindi film so i knew that uh, the audience of this film will not understand the punjabi lyrics that diljeet sings mm-hmm. and pariniti sings for amarjot and chamkila here we have used clever subtitling and uh, some uh, very nice super super ideas which are a little different and interesting then we have the other set of songs which are created for the film itself it's like you know chamkila never made a song for his own life mm-hmm. or his own problems or the world around him he was only making songs that he thought will be interesting and entertaining for an audience which was aggrieved because of the tensions that were happening so but we have made songs the film has made songs on the life of chamkila hmm. so uh, those will play in the background and those have been composed by rehman sir and 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 talking of diljeet dosanjh uh, do ah. you think you were taking a big risk because diljeet is already a humongously popular punjabi singer and yeah. for him to be playing another singer of the past i mean yeah. oh, you know the for us to have that suspension of disbelief 
that this is not diljit but amarjit i do think that was a big challenge it was uh, i now that you say uh, put it like that yes it was a challenge but then the first time i even spoke to diljit about this he was so uh, like you know what he said to me he, he said that सर दुनिया में बहुत लोग ऐसा समझते हैं पंजाब में ऐसे बहुत लोग आपको मिलेंगे जो कहते होंगे और समझते होंगे कि मैं चमकीले का सबसे बड़ा फैन हूं मैं भी उन्हीं लोगों में से एक हूं मुझे भी लगता है कि इस दुनिया में सबसे बड़ा फैन चमकीला का मैं ही हूं दिस इज व्हाट दिलजीत टोल मी नाउ एंड आई गेटिंग टू नो हिम आई न्यू दैट ही दिस इज नॉट अ मैन दैट कैरी इज द बर्डन ऑफ हिज ओन स्टार्डम ऑन हिज शोल्डर दिलजीत डेफिनेटली नॉट when he was shooting when i was talking to him about chamkila then when we were shooting we were not he was never thinking about are i am diljit dosanjh or anything of that sort none not not at all and i got that sense about this person right from the beginning that he will play it truthfully now will people accept diljit as chamkila is a question but the only way that we can answer it is by truthfully representing chamkila through this actor you know and we have done so very honestly and we have done it because we wanted to diljit played this role because he wanted to because he is a fan so we expect that you know <coughs> people will be able to uh, enjoy it finest actors there are how how good an actor is diljit oh amazing um, there is like i i'm really one of the things that i'm very keen to see is what people say about diljit's performance in this film I'm very keen to see it and and otherwise i mean talking philosophically do you think uh, what is the purpose of art is it to elevate or is it to reflect it's a mixture of many things i would say it is also to entertain it is also to provide relief it is uh, it is um, uh, actually to provide insight it is uh, very it is very important more than even and you know what entertainment by entertainment i don't mean that people should only laugh when they see a piece of art they can also cry to br- to to bring you to emotion mm. is the purpose of art i feel and is the story of uh, chamkila also the story of punjab in a way yes it and is so as one of your song goes you know yes. absolutely and this is uh, i mean people ask me why i have made a biopic for the first time because for me chamkila was a case in point for punjab itself the story of punjab is reflected in him and vice versa and it's a very dynamic story it's a very ironic story of the presence of opposites in punjab as well as in chamkila and then do you see a parallel in muse wala's death and if you when you heard of his death uh, i mean like what, what were your feelings really it was very sad uh, i mean my first, it's very unfortunate the circumstances for both of them were different but then they were almost the same age and uh, we were already going to be making this film when this happened so it was like quite bizarre at that point of time but it was never not at all a happy feeling it was a terrible feeling to receive the news of a young talented popular singer going going away like this so uh, the parallel does not i mean there are many differences but both of them are extremely popular in the grassroots and did did it affect your narrative in any way not at all. you no not at all So there is no case the case was completely different the, the circumstance was completely different in both cases there is there is no contemporary ring to it right no no this is the story chamkila is a story that takes place in the 80s in punjab it gets over in the 80s you are best known for your love stories how how would you define chamkila story is it also a love story in a way a love for music love for i yes, mean it is i feel that it is the story of love between an artist and his music and performance uh, this is a love that chamkila could not give up uh, uh, give up and this is the love that took his life gave him everything and took everything away from him as well and what what would uh, intyaz love story read like 
well <laughs> i don't know um i am definitely not interested that much in myself to find out what my love story is going to be like i am actually happier uh in the world of making other stories rather than thinking about my own uh, this this is a question you know that has been on my mind of course it has nothing to do with chamkila but when your brother uh, made uh, laila machnu and we had this you know wonderful actors tripti dimri and avinash tiwari who have been you know discovered now as we speak yeah. so how, how does it make you feel you know that that talent went almost unnoticed at that point sometimes that's the story of life you know it takes some time for people to see some people's uh, you know some actors brilliance and sajid specifically my brother who made or directed uh, lela majnu had made another movie which is going to be releasing later on z5 the name of that movie is wo bhi din the Mm-hmm. why i am specifically referring to this one is that in that film which was made around 10 years back you will see many 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 actors that mm-hmm. have now become extremely popular you will see adarsh gorav doing the first film of his life mm-hmm. you will see um um uh, rohit um i forgot his name mm-hmm. but you can look it up if you like and then you will see sanjana sangvi who uh, th- playing the first time lead you know these young kids who have now become immensely popular rohit saraf mm-hmm. become uh, extremely popular at that point of time uh, were picked up for the first time by mm-hmm. sajid by this film and uh, then um, joy borwa who later did um, the music of Leila Majnu, and mm. who made O Meri Leila was doing the music there. So I feel Sajid has this special blessing that he picks up talent that goes a long way. Uh, but I mean, like you're talking of uh, OTT platforms. What made you opt for Netflix, considering the f- fact that the film has already generated such a buzz? Don't you think a theatrical opening would have been much better? See, we had agreed upon this before I started shooting. Mm-hmm. so there was no way that i'd back out and also i think uh, for two things one is that they were so keen and loving they've to dealt with us with a lot of love they've dealt with chamkila with a lot of love mm-hmm. that is number one Se- next ne- second thing is that i wanted to see how this game is played you know like i don't want to i didn't want to dismiss this medium i want to i know that this is a medium of the present and the future i wanted to discover what this medium is about and the best way to do it is to do actually a film on the digital medium but but you've done some work for ott previously ever directed yeah, she ha uh, she was uh, like uh, i was the showrunner for mm-hmm. that one and and also for dr arora which was on uh, sony but i've never directed so i thought let me just direct and see what happens differently there i'll be able to judge mm-hmm. but have you have you discovered anything different uh well <laughs> one of the things is that you have to give delivery 3 months before the release because okay. it take that much time to ingest because it also goes to 200 countries with sub and the subtitling has to happen in all those different languages the dubbing has to happen in so many languages so that's that's a that's new for us and now like the movie is going to release but all the work is over so it's a strange different feeling secondly um it gives us a chance to figure out how an indian movie a hindi movie performs in different parts of the world you know play 200 countries is a lot you know traditionally a hindi film releases in much much lesser countries and that too theatrically the scope becomes smaller in terms of the reach this is massive reach so i want to see what happens in that kind of a scenario And, and the pressures are off because there is no box office to cater to that's not true because uh, um, there is a way to find out they netflix obviously has a way to find out how each one of their content is doing mm-hmm. 
so they will they will find out the only thing is that we don't know we can't uh, check them we'll have to believe them but that's fine um, yeah. there is a mechanism that is already in place you know back in the day producers did not know mm. that the distributors were telling them honestly about the figures that they are collecting at different centers or not then the producers got the game they also understood and now data is available right for the digital medium that pro- that time has not come mm. right now distributors uh, producers don't know um, how exactly to approximate the data of how popular it has been but the pressure is always going to be there if anybody spends money gives you money for your uh, work yeah they will tell you also whether they've got money in return excess or less you know So that question. Any point did you debate uh, about making it in Punjabi alone? No, I would make it in Punjabi. Firstly, because I feel that this subject is not a regional subject. It it needs to go. The I the story I wanted that the story of Chamkila should go. Firstly, everywhere that my films can go, because it is a. I believe it's a universal story. I believe what happened in the life of Chamkila happens everywhere in the world, and why should it not reach? So mm-hmm. I wanted that I could only I couldn't make it in like a Hollywood film. Otherwise, I would have even done that because I really truly believe this is a universal subject, and so therefore never in. So I didn't think of making it in Punjabi at all. So what would you say to your vire of Punjab who are I mean like most of whom are really looking forward to the film, and then there is a small mini squal section who is easily offended. आप देखो पाजी हमने तो बड़ी मोहब्बत से बनाई है आप तो फेमस हो दुनिया में मोहब्बत के लिए अगर पंजाब के हो सो प्लीज वॉच इट एंड सी फॉर योर सेल्फ वी हैव ट्राइड टू वर्क हार्ड ऑन इट मेक इट ऑथेंटिक एंड रिस्पेक्टफुल वी डोंट वी मीन ओनली लव टू एवरीबॉडी इन पंजाब इट इज द स्टोरी ऑफ पंजाब इट इज योर फिल्म प्लीज वॉच एंड मेक अप योर माइंड पर्सनली And, and and finally, is there any song of Chamkila which is on your playlist has become your caller tune? <laughs> Not no. Uh, uh, I don't have a caller tune song, but mm-hmm. there are many songs of Chamkila that I really like, and one of them I comes to mind is "Adhiya Da Nasha Chhod Gaya." There is mm-hmm. another one which is "Kurti Satrang Di," mm-hmm. and. Uh, uh, and then there is uh, also you know baba tera nankana i like a lot naam japle i like a lot um then uh, there is another one rondi ka londi ni uh wo ek muklave ka gana hai so many many songs yaar i shikhar do pehri there is a song so and after after the i mean after the movie stream how what would you like the viewers to take home look at him with see as they said about chamkila baki kalakar stars hain but tu apna hai chamkila okay this is what i'd like them to take home that he had a shine of his own right yeah mm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time, Mr. Amtiyas. Thank yeah. you. I'm uh, we're looking forward to watching the film. Yes. yes. Let me know, please. Uh, yes. Tell me what you think. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, certainly. Certainly. I'll be. I'm looking. I'm so looking forward to watching yeah. it. Yeah. Right. Okay. I wish, I wish there was a uh, like a screening possibility in Chandigarh. Yeah. I'd love that. Yeah. Yeah. Please. <clears throat> Before it. Right? Yeah. Is there a possibility? No, uh, if there is some demand from there, no. If like somebody says that, oh, before the release, two days before, three days before, we would like to host this, then okay. I can talk to Netflix. Okay, okay, okay. So we'll, we we are putting it out there. <laughs> yeah, we are putting it out there. Hopefully, right. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody can take a cue. Right. Okay. Yes. Okay. 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 Thank you so much. Okay.